Okay. Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I have Bobby here, and we also have Steve Rubenfair uh, from Better Takes, and this is kind of a follow-up on uh, a video we made uh, some time ago, and we've talked about this in, in our various chats, about this project that we've been working on with Steve uh, called Better Takes, which is essentially, well, what Steve explain a little more, but it's the app that, uh, that takes a look at your betting histories, and the idea is that it, it attempts to find patterns and biases in a way that makes you hopefully learn from them and become a better better. And it's got other things that we're working on and things like that. And then Bobby thought it would be a good time for an update on uh, where we are with the app and some of the things that we can do. Um, so I'm going to just turn it over to Steve and have him give sort of a demo of where we're at right now. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Eric. And um, basically, our app is live. You can download it from the Apple App Store. And if you're not on Apple, if you have a different kind of phone, you can go on your mobile browser to m.bettertakes.com. You can see um, this URL right here. It doesn't work on desktop. It works on mobile only. Although, as you can see, I've rigged it on the desktop. You can see these weird things on the right. So if need be, if you know how to do this kind of inspect stuff, you can get it going on desktop. But basically, the way the program works is it starts off with the prediction you make. You tell the program what bets you're planning on making today. Our algorithm then looks through your prior betting history, looks for similar situations, and takes a whole bunch of variables and distills them into something we call an edge score. And the edge score is the representation of proficiency in the particular bet you're making. And I'll show you in a minute. This is actually, um, this is my Better Takes account. I bet college basketball, and I'll show you what I do every day before I place bets. So the point here is that we all have biases and hidden things we're not aware of. You know, there's a lot of psychological factors that really rule, like our unconscious, our subconscious probably has a lot more to do, has a lot more influence in our day-to-day -day life than we realize. And of course, our betting isn't immune to that. So what this program does is it illuminates things that you might not be able to see on your own. It shows you your patterns. It shows you your biases. Maybe a couple of years ago, you heard home team with points is a good thing to bet. And so you bet a few and they won. But since then, you've been losing at them and not realizing it. It just kind of shakes you up from your day-to-day -day patterns and has you allows you to take a real look at how you're doing. And as you know, there's a ton of information out there. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of trends, a lot of strategies. And it's all played out. Everyone's got the same info. But this is a way that you can get an edge just by looking at your own patterns. So we think that there's a winner inside everyone, inside you. If you knew what was going on, you could do a lot better. And so that's what this program does. It helps expose your strengths and weaknesses. So you can make a more informed betting decision. And I'll show you a little bit how I go through it. So this is the first screen, select bets. These are NCAA basketball games. And I like a few bets today. Um, high point over Longwood is probably my best of the day, best bet of the day, high point. So I'm clicking through. It has the, the, um, the sports books. Um, you can select which sports books you play with. I actually, um, I'm not in a state where it's legal, so I can't use any of these sports books, but the line I'm getting on the game is plus five. So I'm going to select this and you'll see plus five light up. And so now this has been logged in as a bet. And I'm going to do two more to show you. Um, and here's another bet I like. Campbell minus three, I think is a good bet. So I'm clicking here, minus three. And again, it doesn't really matter for my purposes which sports book I pick. Um, so let's keep going, keep going. And uh, Providence is another game I like today. So Providence here. Now you can see all these sports books have plus three. Now I, I must be betting in a bad place because I only got plus two and a, two and a half. So what I can do is I can enter my own odds. I can click this. I can click point spread at 2.5, money line minus 110. It's actually very easy. And I can submit that. And I'm going to show you one more thing. All right, let's find one more game. Appalachian State, I think, is a good bet against Marshall. I'm going to take them. There's also something called confidence level units. And here you can decide how much you like the game. If you bet per units, if you like confidence level, there's five stars here. You can use as many as you like. If you don't select one, we're going to assume it's a one-star bet. This is something I really don't use. All my bets are the same, but I know a lot of people have bets that are better than others. 
And where this is useful is it keeps track of how you do with bets that you think are better. Because everyone, or not everyone, but a lot of people bet more on their best bets. They bet more on bets they think have more value. But how do you do in those bets? Are those really your best bets? Do you do better on bets that you think are better? Or are you better off betting just the same unit on every, every bet? And this is what this will tell you. If you are the kind of person that when you bet, you bet multiples like two, three, or four of your unit, use this confidence level. And if there's a discrepancy, we'll start telling you. We'll start saying, hey, you know, your four-star bets don't do any better than your one-star bets. In fact, they do a little worse. So it's something that you might not keep track of on your own that we're going to keep track of for you. I'm not going to use it right now, but I will bet the game itself. And then when you're when you're done with the bets and you can you can go to different leagues, you can go to NFL, NBA. I only bet NCAA basketball, so I'm just going to stick here. And the next step is to analyze the bets. And this is really the core of the program. And when you hit this, these are the four bets I made. And you can see they have a number on them next to them with a green sign. That green sign is the edge score. And these are the edge scores, 55.72, 52.12, and so on. Here's a big one, 58.56. An edge score of 50 means that you don't really have a proficiency. You don't have expertise in that area. If we did edge scores for coin flips, they would all converge on 50. So it tells you where your strengths lie, where your expertise lies, where you're more competent. And these little arrows can give you some little information about the bet itself. So this is this is telling me that, um, well, I guess these ROI figures I don't think are correct. We have to look into that. Sorry about that. But the NCAA basketball tells me I'm 180 and 152. That's not bad. Tells me how I do on away teams, because this is an away team. Tells me how I do on underdogs. And it tells me how I do on high point. I've actually um, two one and one and three bets on high point. Looking at my higher edge score bet, you can see the same thing. And uh, it's just some interesting stats that you can uh, mm -hmm. you can check out about your bets. And that's yeah. it. When, when you're done, do you have any questions about this or want to? No, no, no. Go ahead. Just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go after you. After you. I, I actually think it's kind of cool that, I mean, we've been doing this with him, with Steve for for quite some time. And, you know, we, we participate in some of the calls and some we don't. And some of the more, you know, uh, back end related calls, we don't, I don't really participate in. And, and just seeing this kind of flow like this, I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't seen this yet. I mean, honestly, and this looks great. I mean, this is a, this is, this is, this is real, this is real time uh, feedback. I mean, this actually looks, uh, this actually looks pretty good, you know, and, and, and uh, again, my, my, question that I would have from if I didn't know the answer already is like what what do you like what do you do with this information you know like like okay. you like you get that and 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 what do you what do you do with that so that's a great question and I should I forgot to mention one thing so that's actually um, a good lead in so you can do with this information whatever you want it depends on you you know every bet you make there's a lot of information that goes into it and this is just another piece of information but you know if 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 it's something that you have a low edge score in you might want to consider not making the bet or betting less. If it's something you have a high edge score bet in, you might double down or bet a little more than usual. So it might, you know, it, how you use it is just going to depend on you. I mean, if you're making this bet because you're going to the game, actually, if you're, make, if you're making this bet because you're just going to the game and want some action, don't run it through the program. Only run bets through the program that you feel really, um, really, really come from a place of your opinion. They really are, you know, it's an opinion you had. But what's can, what's uh, what what's what's good? I mean, like I see one one of this edge scores is fifty eight, another is fifty two. Like what's I guess good is a weird weird word to ask, but I know weird word to use. But but what what's good? Like what's if I look at this and I see Appalachian State fifty eight, I see well it's better than my Providence edge score, but is it is it is it any good anyway? It is good. So over you know over fifty means that you have an advantage. Okay. And these numbers are statistically significant. They take into account, one of the big things they take into account is sample size. For example, if you have eight wins and two losses, that's a great record, but there could be a lot of luck involved. That's not a big sample size. But if you have the same winning percentage with 80 wins and 20 losses, you're gonna get a much, much higher edge score because the because you've proven that win percentage over a larger sample size. So the higher edge scores are better. 
And we need to do a better job of education to answer your question, what they mean exactly. And it's a little nebulous. Clearly, 58 is better than 52. And it's actually a lot better. 58 means that I have a, a really good chance of hitting this bet. And we don't put percentages on it or anything like that. Maybe we should. But 58 is certainly within the range of profitability, where I can expect to make a profit over time at a bet of 58. I would say probably around, you know, when you're taking account the VIG and stuff, you know, you know 52, 53 is about the break even. 57, 58 is start getting good. And when you're in the 60s, um, I've never had a bet in the 60s, but when you start getting in the 60s or higher, then you really have an advantage. You have a definite statistical advantage in that particular bet, and you might want to think about betting more. Mm -hmm. One thing I should add yeah. is that if you look at these, and you know my scores are all pretty good, they're all pretty around the same number, but if, if you decide not to bet, like let's say I looked at this Campbell bet and I said, you know what, 52 is not good enough. I'm going to not place the bet. What you're supposed to do is uncheck it. And the reason you want to do that is you want to tell us that you didn't make the bet because you looked at the edge score and you changed your mind. And the reason that's important is because we keep track of that separately. And we'll tell you how you do. We'll say, hey, those bets that you're not placing after you see the edge score, you're doing pretty well. And we'll also tell you, if you don't uncheck low edge scores, that maybe you should have. We're going to say, hey, we noticed that edge scores, you have a lot of bets with edge scores in the low 40s that aren't too great, and you're still following through with them. You're not unclicking with them, and those bets are losing. So these, when you, when you tell us that when you change your mind about a bet, it's important because we keep track of it and we tell you how you do. So whenever you put this bet in, it obviously um, it obviously is going to add to your future statistics. Um, so the more stuff you put in, the better you know your numbers. I mean, the more reliable the numbers are going to be. Is there any way? I guess I know the answer to this already, but 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 is there any way to like up, upload or like put do bets that you've already made before you you started with the uh, yes program? So there's a couple ways to do that. I'm going to click out of this screen. Do you want do you want to do the stats screen uh, after that or first? Because I think that it's important to go through the the, the some okay, more. I'll go through this stuff first, and then I'll go okay. through that. Okay, sounds good. So when you're done picking your games, there's basically two more parts. There's a few more parts to this program. So this is kind of it's called the my action page, and it shows you what bets you have coming up, and it shows me these four bets I have coming today, and I can get the same stats here. And once the games are live, they show up here. And this is actually pretty cool. It'll show you um, the score. It'll show you if your bet is winning or losing. We're going to add something. So for totals to tell you if your total bet is winning or losing relative to the time left in the game. So, and the games show up here. Um, once they've ended, they stay in here all day. So here you can see what bets you have coming up. And here you can see what bets have already started or have ended. Another important screen is the stats page. And the stats page gives you a, a pretty nice, exciting breakdown of all of the um, of all of your bets. And it's um it's actually uh, it's just your own stats, but it's amazing. I don't think you I really don't believe I have never seen another site where you can even get this. This isn't even an important part of our program. This is just showing you your stats. And I have seen all kinds of bet trackers and stuff, but I've never seen anything that presents your stats that way. So when this is collapsed, it looks like this. If you open up NCAA basketball, it'll show you how you do for each conference and how you do for your conference. And then you can do by team. So Big Ten, I can click on that and I can see how I do with all these different teams. Mm -hmm. One thing I found really interesting for my NBA betting is that like I, I actually felt like this has been really helpful. Like I, I, it's not surprisingly to myself, do much better betting on the Eastern Conference than I'm sorry, the Western Conference than I do the Eastern Conference. I'm more familiar with the West Coast teams. Uh, I, I, I think other people uh, a little bit sometimes. The, you know, the focus is sort of generally most people aren't even awake a lot of the times those games start, and now that's right in my sweet spot. So I'm much more, I'm much better with West Coast teams. Another interesting thing is I'm like, like I was looking at some of my breakdowns. Memphis, for whatever reason, Memphis, Denver, and Phoenix, I just, I'm like literally like 55 plus percent ROI on. That's so um, funny. There's certain teams that you really do get the feel for when you go well. And a lot of it has to do with 
teams playing back to backs in Denver and then having to travel and even the spread, while they still try to account for it in Vegas, oftentimes it's not enough. There's more blowouts like that. Those are also teams I tend to play a lot in DFS, so it makes more sense that I'm more familiar with those players. Um, so there's a lot of things that are interesting about that, and I think that it's really cool the way that it breaks it down, just like you're talking about. And I found it very useful um, as my NBA bets have been have been really good. I'm, I think I'm at, at a little over about 61 on my edge score, but if I get to just the Western Conference it gets really, really good. And like my ROI goes up to, you know, over 20%, which is wow. a big number. And, 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 you know, that this is something that, you know, this is really important, what you're saying right now, that people do, um, people do have resonate with certain leagues, certain conferences, certain teams. There are absolutely people that do well betting the Knicks or betting the Tigers or something and are more in tune with them for whatever reason. And this is something that that really isn't in any philosophy. Like if you read about betting or if you see about like different variables, you know, people will ridicule you for saying, oh, I know the Nets and I know I know how they're going to do. But we've proven that that's that 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 there is a correlation that you can be better at something. And that is actually factored in the edge score. So, yeah. So when you when you bet. So these edge scores that are here in the categories, they're not that meaningful. They're, they're very different than the edge score that we just looked at for a particular bet. An edge score for a particular bet has a lot of factors in them. And one thing we do factor in is the conference, the division, and the team. You know, if you're 14-0 betting Illinois, that matters. You know, that factors in somewhere. It's not going to give you a huge edge score because the sample size is big, but it's going to factor in somewhere. We believe that you could have a certain expertise with a team, a division, and a conference. And we've proven it. So mm -hmm. some other stats you can see here are home, like home fave, home dog. You can see home dogs, I do pretty well. Away fave, away dog. If you look under favorite, you can have high favorites or low favorites, favorites by over 10 points or favorites by under three points. Same with underdogs. This is how I do with big underdogs or low underdogs. And then totals, which I just don't bet. You can do the same thing with totals. We can show you how you do with totals. And this is just a fun thing. It, it's not really, I mean, it just, it's looking at your own stats, but I don't, I've never seen anything like this on any, you know, Action Network or any other tracker. I've never seen a list of your own stats like this. Mm -hmm. All the games are actually also in your history. You can look at them one by one. You can see how you can see the breakdown. And mm -hmm. you can also edit them. You can add a bet if you missed it. You can edit a bet and delete it. Now, don't cheat on this. You're only, you're only cheating yourself. But it's mm -hmm. true. Keep this accurate. If you genuinely missed a bet, if it reflected your opinion, put it in later, that's fine. If you made a bet by mistake and meant to erase it and really didn't, you know, if, if, if you found out before post time that there was a player injured and you ended up not making the bet, you can take it out of here, too. So, you know, it's important. What's important here for you is accuracy. You want it to be accurate. You want your past history to reflect all of your opinions. You don't want it to have any junk in there that didn't reflect your opinion, like you bet a game that because you happen to be going to the game. So keep it accurate. And this is a way you can keep it accurate. Now, when we have contests and things like that, you can't the, you can change the bet for your own edge score and your own stats, but you can't change it when you're competing with other people. We're going to start having leaderboards and other contests, and once you have that bet, and it's too late. But for yourself, you'll always be able you'll always be able to change your information because it's to benefit you. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, and then we also have insights. I don't have any right now, but um, insights might be something like. You know, the past two weeks, you've gotten a lot better or, you know, the bets that you're not making, the ones that you're unchecking, you're doing a good job. So insights are little things added on things that we will tell you about your performance that um, are a little narrative form that have a little story and you'll be notified when you have an insight. And this will say like a, a number one by it. Another part of this uh, we have is, so, so, so this, is, this is all the analytical stuff. This is all the stuff that's going to help you become a better, better. But we also, our algorithm also powers some fun things too. And we have some great social features. We have something called bet circles. And bet circles are groups of friends or networks that want to pool their resources, have contests, talk about the games. This is a really fun part of the program. So um, we have a... We have a circle here uh, called Frank for some reason. And you can see that um, basically on the bets tabs, what we're going to do here is all the bets from the members 
in the circle that have a high edge score that's actually set really low right now as we're starting out. Right now, any bet, I think over a 52 appears here. But the great thing here is that if any member of the circle has a high bet, it shows up here for everybody in the circle to take advantage of. So when Bobby's going through his bets and he's got some bets in the Western Conference that are in the 60s, they're gonna show up here. And it's a way that friends can all pool resources and everyone's best bets all rise to the top so everyone can see them. And then we also have chat and uh, you can talk about the game. So if we wanna talk about this game, You can start a game, a chat relevant to the game, and you can start, uh, you can also start a, a chat relevant to another game that's not on here, like uh, Western Carolina game. I don't, no one has a bet on, so we can start a chat about a game that there's no bet on either. Okay, and so this members tab just shows the members of the thing. And then the other fun part of this is the contests. And um, the contests basically, um, we have something called better coins, which are just something that it, 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 this contest takes two better coins to join. It's not that big of a deal right now. Pretty soon the coins are gonna take a more active role and you'll be able to do something with them. Right now you're just gambling these coins on the contest and they're winner take all. So for example, I'm gonna join this NFL contest, even though I know nothing about the NFL. And these contests are one bet per game. So you can bet an over, you can bet an under, you can bet the point spread. You can hit one of these arrows and you can get to the first half. So I can, I can bet first half Giants minus three. I can bet, I can select one bet a game. And uh, you don't have to bet all the, you don't have to pick all of them right now. So it says 12 to 16 selected. I can go back and see that I have 12 of 16 selected and that I need to do a little more. So mm -hmm. um, the contests, uh, so sorry, I, my, my circle isn't that active, so there's not a lot of data, but at the end of the contest, you have a leaderboard, and then there's also chat about the contest as well. And uh, we'll have a lot more contests as uh, mm -hmm. things progress. Right now, we have weekly contests for NCAA, I'm sorry, for um, NFL and NBA. And then we will um, we'll add more contests as time goes on. And we'll add more um, functionality for you to have your own contests with your own rules. Like you can pick number of games you want to bet. You can pick the duration of them. So the contest is something that we're going we're gonna to expand a lot right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's basically it. Um, I'm going to show one more thing. You were going to get, get back to how to upload. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So better takes worse, works best the more information it has. And there's basically three ways to add your betting history to better takes. The easiest way is through this link called BetSync. Now, BetSync, with BetSync, we can link your Better Takes account to the legal sports books in the US. So if you use any of the legal sports books, bet on um, DraftKings, FanDuel, Barstool, with this link, you can access those, your, your betting accounts there, and you can download all your previous history into Better Takes and pre-populate it. And this is great. You'll, this is the easiest way to do it. It just takes a couple seconds. I, Unfortunately, I don't live in a state with legal betting, so I can't show you here, but it's just very simple. It takes just a few seconds. You can link your account to your legal U.S. sportsbook account, and your history at Better Takes is populated with all your history. It's pretty amazing. Now, if you're like me and you aren't able to bet yet in a legal state, you can also upload a, a spreadsheet of your bets, and that's something you have to um, contact customer support right now. Basically, you can email us at admin at bettertakes.com and we will give you a format. We'll give you a spreadsheet to put your bets in. A lot of companies like I think Bavada allows you to or lets you download your bets in a spreadsheet. So if you can get your bets in a spreadsheet, we can add them to your we can add them to your account. Worst comes to worst, if, you, if there's no way to get your back history in there, you can just start entering at Better Takes and you'll get meaningful results within a week or two. 
And the reality is it's fascinating to look at your own data, even the first week, even the second week, even when you only have four, six or eight vets, it's super interesting to look at your data. So if you can't get your previous history into better takes and mass, don't be discouraged. Just start using it. Just start as soon as you can, and you'll be glad you did. And you'll start having meaningful results pretty soon. How much, uh, how much, how much are we charging? How much, how much does it cost right now? So this offers a lot of value and we, we've, we, you know, there's a lot of different, uh, we've thought a lot about different pricing scenarios and we've decided that everything you see here is free. So everything we see here, everything you've seen, everything I've shown you, our flow, the contest, that's all free. And we have no plans to charge for any of that. We have a lot, we have a very extensive roadmap. We have a lot of super, super cool features we're gonna add. And at some point we will put them behind a paywall and we will start charging a little bit for the advanced features. But right now it's free. There's no reason not to do it. Go to the app store, search for Better Takes or go to your mobile browser and type in m.bettertakes.com. Just start doing it. Create an account, start adding your picks, do it today and you'll find meaningful results very soon. Absolutely. And in a world where we spend all of our time on predictive analysis, this is a really, really interesting way to look back at doing sort of the opposite. You know what I mean? Is really looking through your history and finding out where you're weak and where, where, where you're strong. And you'll find things that logically make sense, especially if you're a large volume better. And like Steve said, the more of a sample size, the better, you know, the more accurate your results are going to be. But it's, uh, it's, it is really, really interesting. And I think it's really useful for anyone out there. I would encourage everyone to do it. I also, we will be hosting some true DFS contests on there in the new year. So if you are watching this on our, you know, from our site and everything, I think you should, uh, should get involved. I think it's a really, really worthwhile, uh, worthwhile, worthwhile for your time. And also it gives you a different way of looking at uh, information that we, you know, rather than doing everything predictively, look, really looking back and seeing what, what our strengths and weaknesses are. I think it's really valuable. We also have, um, correct me if we also have a, we have a Discord channel, which is live. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, Discord, Discord we'll, we'll link to the video. So what we'll do is in the link to uh, this description, we'll put the link to the Discord channel mm -hmm. where people can sign up for that, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sign up. Yeah, get, in, get involved in the Discord channel. Um, you can always, I'm I'm the CEO. My name is Steve. You can email me at steve at bettertakes.com if you have any questions or problems. We also, um, at the bottom right of every page, you see this little chat icon? We have, um, if you ever have any questions or you're stuck, just click on this. It opens up a chat window. And we're a small company. It goes directly to me at the moment. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions or suggestions or feedback, this is new. We just, it just came out with it. You can see there's a couple of bugs here and there. It's not perfect. It works. There's no bugs in the main flow, but there might be a little thing, you know, some things here and there, aesthetic things or whatever. So, if you have any feedback or questions or anything you want to say, this is the time we really want to hear from you. If you're a pro better and you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. All right. Well, uh, thanks for the update. Um, and we look for, hey, listen, everybody get in there and give us your feedback. And uh, I guess that will do it.